The sun was shining brilliantly over the college campus as a group of students gathered outside the main building, when a female student, Kim Maihee, who spotted Jang Su Chan and called out to him with great enthusiasm, Su Chan turned to face her, his attention captured by her vibrant energy. As Kim Maihee approached the group, she asked Su Chan if he was planning to go for lunch. This innocent question ignited a fierce jealousy in the hearts of Su Chan's friends who began teasing him and Mai Hee, calling them the department's official couple. In an effort to include Su Chan in their plans, his friends invited Kim Mai Hee to join them for drinks, a clear implication that Su Chan would be accompanying them. Delighted by the offer, Kim Mai Hee rushed towards Su Chan, her hands reaching out to grab him in excitement. But Su Chan, overwhelmed by conflicting emotions, reacted poorly to Kim Mai Hee's advance. His hand came up and he slapped her away. Everyone was shocked by Su Chan's behavior, so they asked him if anything was wrong. He apologized and said he was not feeling well and that he would just go home. But his friends were perplexed as to what could have caused his abrupt change in demeanor. Su Chan further explained himself that, after competing in five rounds with the wrestling team the day before, he thought he may have pushed himself too far. However, his friends and Kim Mai Hee were confused as they didn't know there was a wrestling team in their school. Later, Su Chan was spotted heading home. Thinking he was starting to run out of excuses, Su Chan noticed a somber looking guy wearing a nose mask on the other side of the street, which reminded him that the guy had once been a popular college student. However, the man ended up being by himself because he displayed his complex to his peers by getting a rash from an alcohol allergy after drinking too much at a party. As a result, the man felt embarrassed and fled the scene due to the faces his friends made, which led the man to develop a loner attitude. As Su Chan arrived at his residence, he went to the bathroom, where he removed his shirt, revealing his upper body, which was heavily wrapped in bandages, which he removed as a pair of insect wings fully unfurled from his back, which he probably thought to be dragonfly wings. This was his complex and secret he didn't show to anyone. He wondered how his peers would react if they knew he had a pair of insect wings, which he concluded they would be disgusted by its sight. However, Su Chan remembered seeing the phenomenon when he was in middle school. When a dragonfly flew into his room, as soon as he sprayed a pesticide on the dragonfly, it turned into a powder that Su Chan inadvertently swallowed, making him feel sick and forcing him to take the rest of the day off. The following day, he was in the bathroom when he noticed a pair of insect wings on his back. Ever since, he had lived in constant fear of being discovered by people, so he made the conscious decision to avoid being accidentally discovered. His wings were kept a secret, and he was able to focus on his college entrance exams, making the lonely life somewhat bearable for him. However, he hated being alone all the time to the point where he occasionally wanted to commit suicide. When Su Chan was getting ready to go to college, he decided to make a change. He folded his wings before wrapping them up with bandage, which helped him feel more confident. However, soon after, for fear of being found out, he was unable to hang out with his friends or even play with Mai He. He realized that the wings bothered him too frequently because they made his muscles numb when he folded them, which felt like sitting in a chair too, which was the reason why he couldn't go out with his peers and Mai He earlier. As Su Chan was about to leave the bathroom, he found himself looking at Kim Mai He. She blushed insistently and quickly turned her head away, covering her face, yelling that Su Chan didn't have a pant on. Su Chan did, in fact, have a pant on. However, he was relieved and happy that Mai He didn't notice his wings as he quickly closed the door and asked how she entered his home. She replied that Su Chan's friends had told her they were going to drink at his house, they had given her the address first and instructed her to go there first, as this was a great opportunity for him to get closer to Kim Mai Hee. Su Chan was upset and angry when he heard this statement. Kim Mai Hee then retorted that she wants Su Chan to explain why he left because she had discovered that it had happened a lot of times and because she had noticed that he occasionally appeared sick. When Su Chan heard this, he flinched and said that it wasn't true. Su Chan responded that he was in pain. To which Kim Mai Hee responded that it was clear Su Chan wasn't ill and was concealing something. Kim Mai Hee then retaliated that she wanted to go to the movies with Su Chan and wouldn't leave until he came out. Then Kim Mai Hee said that she was a little disappointed and upset that Su Chan hadn't told her anything. She then reminded Su Chan of the time he shielded her from a persistent senior at the start of the semester, even though she thought he was slightly interfering with her personal matter. But she still appreciated what he did. Kim Mai He blushed a little as she pleaded with Su Chan to let her help him with his issue as well, if he doesn't actually despise her, and that he could rely on her in times of need. As soon as Su Chan realized what Kim Mai He had said to him, he was appreciative, which led him to get dressed and ask her consent to watch a movie as he opened the door, even though he didn't want her to know about it yet. A strange looking man in a hoodie was seen following Su Chan and Kim Mai He as they made their way to the theater. When they arrived at the theater, two students were seen there as they requested a survey from Kim Mai He. 
who gave it to them. Su Chan wasn't happy about it, so he told Kim Mai Hee that the movie was about to begin. Su Chan and Kim Mai Hee were seen sitting together as they watched the movie. Su Chan considered asking Kim Mai Hee out at some point but decided against it because he felt that she would treat him poorly if she knew his secret. Kim Mai Hee left to use the restroom because her drink spilled on her shirt, and shortly after she left, the projector went off, making the movie stop. The screen abruptly turned off while an important scene was being shown, leaving the audience puzzled and incensed. A security guard then burst in and ordered them to evacuate the room right away due to an emergency. However, when the security guard realized that no one was taking him seriously, he went on to explain that a dangerous man had been seen walking around the premises. But before the security guard could finish his words, he was suddenly pierced through from the back by a fang-like hand. And when the people saw this, the theater room was thrown into chaos as pandemonium spread, making everyone run helter-skelter trying to flee from the monster-looking man. As Su Chan wanted to escape as well he recalled that Mai He was still in the restroom. However, the monster-looking man looked around and saw him, revealing an evil smile. He jumped at Su Chan, his fangs aimed at him. Su Chan was filled with fear as he fell back as the monster-looking man approached him. When the monster-looking man arrived, he asked Su Chan if he'd ever seen an insect hybrid before, and that Su Chan had to have consumed the bug powder, jungle juice, as well. The insect-looking man then told Su Chan that the drug caused him to look like that and he was able to smell delicious scents that occur when a carnivorous insect like him eats another insect. And he then charged at Su Chan with his fangs and mouth dripping with saliva, who fled immediately. Not long after falling down and the insect-looking man was about to kill him, Mai He appeared looking terrified with the appearance of the insect-looking man. Su Chan yelled at Mai He to run away and try to save herself, who couldn't move an inch due to fear. While this was going on, a group of people were seen outside the building barred by the policemen. However, a female student who had asked Kim Mai Hee for a survey was seen outside as well as she confronted the policemen that there were still some people inside. At that moment, some people behind her shouted, which made her check what was going on, which led her to see Kim Mai Hee falling from one of the top floors of the building. Su Chan terrified as he saw Mai Hee falling down. He thought of using his wings but there are people below who are watching the situation. He considered looking away to avoid revealing his secret to the curious gazes of the people. But when he saw Mai He's expression, he changed his mind and flew down. He then revealed his wings in order to balance his fall as he caught Kim Mai He as well. Seeing this, the people were shocked by his bizarre appearance and began bringing out their phones and starting to video record and snap his pictures. However, Su Chan reflected on how much he had wanted to hide his secret but ended up revealing it to everyone. However, the female student was also dumbfounded. But she removed her cap to reveal an insect antennae when she received a message from her ear pod asking her what they should do about Su Chan. She replied that they should take him to the academy. Everyone was shocked, wondering how a human could have insect wings unless he was a monster. The insect-looking man was even more shocked to learn that Su Chan was concealing his wings and that the only bug with exceptional flying abilities is a dragonfly. However, Su Chan realized that Mai He had fainted due to head bleeding, and as well realized that it felt familiar even though it was his first time flying. As he took off for the nearby hospital to treat Mai He, the insect-looking man began to experience withdrawal symptoms. The female student then launched a sneak attack on the man, knocking him out cold, claiming that he had not made enough of a scene to prevent talk of the murder in the middle of the city, and that their existence must remain a secret. A month later, the students appeared relieved that the first semester was almost over. Some guys were seen watching the movie theater incident on the phone as they discussed how possible it could be for a bug's wings to be attached to a human body, wondering if the physique of the guy in the incident is similar to Su Chan, staring at Su Chan, who was in a hoodie about to leave the class, wondering if since the pictures were taken and released online, rumors at the school started to spread. He didn't know if it's a blessing or curse, as people don't believe in a fantasy-like event as he remembered what happened to him 12 years ago, when a child with whom he shared a birthday was having a party with other children. He attended but wasn't given a birthday greeting because he doesn't have parents and has nothing to give the children, which made him wonder why he was always different from others. One of Su Chan's friends approached him as he was leaving the college in an effort to see if he had a wing attached. Su Chan slapped the friend's hand away and asked him what he meant. The friend replied that the other guys had dared him to see if the rumors were true. He was shocked by how overreacting Su Chan was, and the other guys turned to stare at him like an animal in a zoo. They looked at him strangely as they moved away from him, whispering to their friends, which annoyed Su Chan as he frequently wondered if they were the same guys he attended school with. He thought it would have been better if the government research team had taken him away. As he boarded the public transportation, he realized he hadn't been on SNS in a while, which prompted him to log on. He noticed that the majority of people had stopped following him, 
and when he checked further, he discovered Mai Page. He's which reminded him that Mai He would awaken that morning. Mai He was seen in the hospital ward yelling at Su Chan not to come any closer to her or try to find her because she was trembling with fear calling him a monster, which stunned Su Chan because the only person he thought he could rely on had also left him. When he got home, he considered severing the wings that were the root of everything that had happened to him, but he was afraid of the pain, which made him realize how pitiful he was, which stunned Su Chan because the only person he thought he could rely on had also left him. When he got home, he considered cutting off the wings that had caused everything that had happened to him, but he couldn't because he was afraid of the pain which made him realize how pitiful he was. Su Chan was last seen walking through the city one month later. He reflected on how miserable the lives of the outcasts ended, whether in humans or animals, and then jumped off, to which his wings sprouted, preventing him from falling off. And when he saw this, he was stunned that he couldn't even die. At that moment, the female student appeared, saying she was jealous of Su Chan, wished she had wings, and thought it was a stupid act for Su Chan to want to fall to his death while he had wings. She asked Su Chan if he wanted to know if there was a way for him to return to his human form. When Su Chan heard this statement, he became agitated because he believed there was still hope for him. However, he noticed that the female student had insect antennae on her head and was standing on a vertical wall without falling which made him wonder what the girl was about. The female student then asked him to let them go into the building first before explaining what she meant earlier. Once inside, Su Chan confronted her, asking what he needed to do to get back to normal. The lady laughed, saying she didn't know, and then invited Su Chan to her school for an interview, where the professor would explain everything to him. Su Chan was stunned by the mention of a professor and interview, not understanding what she meant. The female student then informed him that her school bus is waiting on the first floor, and that if Su Chan can follow her, he would meet them. However, Su Chan was not convinced yet, as he asked her how he can trust her because the other day he met the praying mantis, and the praying mantis tried to kill him. She then replied him that if he doesn't trust her that he should go and jump off to his death. However, if he trust and follow her, Su Chan would never be alone. This made Su Chan to eventually follow her, even though he doesn't fully trust her but he have nowhere else to go. Su Chan and the female student later were seen in the bus, which was about to pass through a tunnel. The female student then asked Su Chan if he knew about the bug spray, which she held to let him see, as she explained that it is known as jungle juice, a spray that mix human DNA with bug DNA and that the spray was once a popular spray which was used to kill any bug with just one spritz. However, the problem was that if someone used it to kill a bug and the bug's DNA mixed with that of a human nearby then it make the person's particular part of the body to become that of an insect, which was happened to Su Chan and the praying mantis. Shocked by the news, Su Chan asked who could have created the spray, to which she replied that she didn't know and continued that both the company and people who made it were a complete mystery, except for the company who had been circulating the spray in the market which had been discovered and that there is an unknown number of people who have been exposed to the spray. Su Chan then checked his phone to see if what she said, to which she replied that they had already erased all traces, and the female student then announced their arrival as the bus came to a stop in the tunnel. Su Chan was perplexed as to why the bus had stopped in a tunnel, to which the female student replied that they had always lived in hiding. At that moment, a wall opened, revealing a huge town with various types of towering buildings and trees, which she referred to as her campus town, Nest. When Su Chan walked in, he was taken aback because he saw a lot of people like him all over the place, making the place appear to be a jungle, which made him realize that there were a lot of people like him around. The praying mantis was seen heavily cuffed in one of the buildings at the time, and as he looked down outside, he spotted Su Chan, whom he referred to as Dragonfly. However, the guards behind saw this and used their weapons on him, generating electricity that was used to electrocute him, informed him to drop the idea of escaping because he would soon be used for experimentation. However, despite the torture, the praying mantis was seen salivating as he said he met with the dragonfly again. As Su Chan walked around town, he discovered that everyone is an insect hybrid like him, to which the female student told him that everyone in the nest is affected by the jungle juice and that. While the place is called a university, it's actually a facility used to protect people like them, to which Su Chan saw different kinds of insect hybrids. Seeing this, the female student told him that, as she said earlier, he won't be alone any longer. She then informed Su Chan to look around that she will be back after reporting to the department office, and that the only transfer student for the term is Su Chan only. Then she left. Su Chan was later seen wandering around as he had never imagined that such a fantasy-like school existed in his country, Korea. He discovered that everyone ranged from children to elderly as he was in disbelief that they had a bug part like him and were even exposed. He then saw some bees wafting around as they gathered at a white-haired middle-aged man's chest which was secreting honey. The middle-aged man was seen mediating as he then picked a bee from his chest and ate saying that as he provided honey, 
he was provided with protein, which implies the cycle of life. Su Chan was shocked and disgusted when he saw the man eating the bees, which led him to believe that there were no normal people present. As he attempted to walk away, the man lifted Su Chan's clothes revealing his pair of dragonfly wings, which led the middle-aged man to discover that Su Chan is a dragonfly hybrid. He then asked Su Chan why he was trying so hard to conceal it. Upon hearing this, Su Chan remembered how Kim Mai he yelled at him, calling him a monster, and then replied that he had come there to get rid of the wings and then he walked away. The middle-aged man laughed and called Su Chan a pitiful idiot. Madu Hyun, a full-time professor of the Bug Benefits Department, was seen in one of the classrooms in the Nest Research Building as he introduced himself to Su Chan and praised the female student, whom he referred to as He Jin, for bringing Su Chan to the Nest. He then turned to Su Chan and told him that he had heard good things about him from the news. However, Su Chan's eyes were filled with excitement as he suspected that the man in front of him knew how he could return to being human. Professor Ma Du Hyun then brought out a remote, saying that he shall inform Su Chan about how he can return to being human again. He then switched on the screen and asked Su Chan to watch the video first, which made Su Chan think that it was so quick as to how he was going to obtain his answers. And then he focused his attention on the screen. Professor Ma Du Hyun then explained that the video was about their school's graduation. He then moved the scene to the next scene which showed the grade representative's graduation speech and that the top graduates, and that the Cinderella ceremony would commence soon, which stunned Su Chan as he didn't know what Cinderella ceremony was. He then saw a lady with a bug head holding up a glass cup filled with a strange-looking liquid, which she drank. The lady then transformed back into a human, which stunned Su Chan, who became agitated as he asked Professor Mandu Hyun about the drink, which turned the bug-headed lady back to human. Professor Mandu Hyun then responded that it was something their university research division created by chance while researching jungle juice, and that they used the basic principle of jungle juice and separated the bug DNA, to which they made the medicine to people to normal humans as he held up a bottle of the medicine, and referred to it as Cinderella. Su Chan was seen as he looked at the medicine excitedly, then asked Professor Mandu Hyun to give him the medicine as it was exactly what he wanted to return back to human. However, Professor Mandu Hyun responded that he could not do so as he hid the medicine behind him. That Cinderella is not an easy medicine to make because it is made from condensed jungle juice, implying that the amount that can be made is limited, and that returning everyone is bad. So he told Su Chan that if he really wanted the medicine, he should enroll in school and graduate at the top of his class, because Cinderella is only given to the most exceptional of the best students. Just like in the video he showed Su Chan, Su Chan and He Jin were seen walking outside the building, and He Jin noticed that Su Chan was lost in thought. She then asked him what he wanted to do, to which Su Chan replied that only giving Cinderella to the best student meant that he had to enroll. He Jin then said that it was his choice as to how he wanted to go about it, and that if he didn't want to enroll, he could just live there. She went on to say that even if he enrolls, becoming the top student is extremely difficult. Su Chan then responded that he was relieved that the cost for him to return to human was not financial, and he then brought his glasses and wore them, saying that if it's just academics, it might be possible for him, revealing a confident smile, and then asked He Jin to bring him to where he could process his transfer procedure immediately. A few hours later, many different types of students were seen at the lecture hall entrance, excitedly discussing which professor or class might be easy for them to pass. Su Chan was observed as he observed the students gisting about school activities, which made him realize that the location is more akin to a university than he had previously thought. He Jin gave Su Chan the course guidelines as she explained that he only needed to choose one of the three courses written in the book for enrollment. Su Chan took the book and checked out the courses, but he was confused as to how strange the course titles were as they were different from the normal course titles, and he even thought he got the wrong book. But upon reading through he discovered a course taught by Professor Ma Du Hyun to be a lot better than the others. As more than half of the class got an A and there's no group work as well which made him to have a good impression of the professor as he had met him earlier. He then decided to apply for Professor Ma's class, but he never imagined that they would have to gather together and go through the enrollment process, which was different from the normal process of applying at Cyber Cafe. At that moment, two students flew past as they were locked in fighting, but the female student, who had a scorpion stinger, overpowered the boy, saying that she had told the boy not to show his face at school, which stunned Su Chan as to how they could fight brazenly in the school. However, He Jin told Su Chan not to be afraid, saying that such situations would occur more frequently, and approached the fighters. She then grabbed the scorpion lady at the collar and flung her away. She then turned to the guy, who was shocked as he recognized that the person talking to be Park He Jin. 
department representative. However, when Su Chan saw this, he was stunned as he realized that He Jin was the department representative of the department he was in. Su Chan was seen in the smart lecture room with other students as they went through their enrollment process on the laptop with only 10 minutes until the enrollment. Su Chan went through the PC, convinced that he had no choice but to enroll in Professor Ma's class. A white-haired middle-aged man entered the Nest Research Building as he met Professor Ma Du Hyun, who referred to him as Professor Jai and is also a full-time professor in the Bug Benefit Department. Professor Jai asked Professor Ma about the new transfer student, to which Professor Ma replied that he wants to know the view of Professor Jai about Su Chan, which made Professor Jai to recall his encounter with Su Chan, as he was not sure if Su Chan could finish the enrollment. Su Chan was seen in the smart lecture room, stunned that the enrollment had to be fought for, seeing other students as they rushed out of the lecture room, to which Professor Jai came in and informed him that the only winners will be those who are strong. Looking out the window, Su Chan wondered where everyone had run off to. At that moment, a male student entered the room and asked if he was the new transfer student. He continued by saying that it appeared that Su Chan had not had time to hear any explanation regarding the class enrollment. However, Su Chan was taken aback because he had only recently entered Nest. The boy had B antennae on his head then explained to Su Chan about class enrollment, that they have to find the professor which is unlike the normal process, as they have to find the professor, who is hidden somewhere in the woods as to which can they sign up for the classes, as the professor gives the first 16 students a USB that they can use on their laptops to sign up for classes. Su Chan realizes that he needs to act quickly. The boy with the B antennae then asked him if he has decided on which class to apply for, to which Su Chan replies that he has decided to take Professor Ma's class because he heard that the professor gives the best grades in the school, as he tells the student that his aim is to be the top student in the department, who smiled and replied that he's impressed although it would be a difficult task to accomplish. He then wished Su Chan the best in the class enrollment as they parted ways in the woods. Su Chan had a good impression of the student as he was the one who gave him an insight on what he had to do for the class enrollment. As Su Chan moved deeper into the woods, he realized that he had wasted a lot of time because he didn't get the advantage of the head start. He wished he knew the direction everyone ran to, as it was everyone's aim to be in Professor Ma's class, which was his own aim as well. He then realized that he had his wings which he could use to reach a high vantage position in order to see where other students ran to. He removed his overall coat and then unfurled the wings and flew very high above woods, which made him to see clearly as which way other students are headed to. He then spotted some flags in different points which made him to guess if the flags are the destinations, which implied where the professors were. He then saw students fighting each other, which puzzled him as to what was going on, and he eventually realized that the students were fighting for class enrollment which he thought was a bit extreme. He wondered if he should guess where Professor Ma's flags were, but he decided to fly directly to the flag with the most students. At destination a Professor Ma Du Hyun was seen seated as he read a book. At the same time, Su Chan was seen falling down not far from where Professor Ma was seated, as he could not control his high speed when attempting to land. But he realized his guess was correct when he saw Professor Ma. However, when Professor Ma Du Hyun noticed Su Chan, he stood up and handed Su Chan the last USB, explaining that Su Chan had only just barely managed to get it and that all Su Chan needed to do was return to the lecture room and insert the USB. Su Chan was overjoyed when he received the USB and assumed he had successfully completed the enrollment. Professor Ma then informed the other students that the USBs had run out, prompting the students to stare at Su Chan. Professor Ma then took out his phone and pressed a button, which caused Su Phone Chan's to ring, indicating a text message. He then took out his phone and saw his picture with the other 15 students labeled as the USB targets, which stunned Su Chan as he looked at his picture. Professor Jai was also seen in the other parts of the woods checking out his phone as well, as he chuckled, saying that Su Chan would realize what the text meant by then. He Jin was also seen as she saw the news as well thinking that Su Chan got Professor Ma's USB, as everyone saw that the students who had Professor Ma's USB which included Su Chan, the transfer student. It was at that moment that Su Chan realized that the class enrollment was not over, as he sensed some killing intent aimed at him. Not long after, a longhorn beetle student made a punch at Su Chan who barely dodged it only to see that the tree behind him had fallen, which confused Su Chan as to why he was attacking him fiercely. At that moment, a whip spider student used his hand-shaped whips on his back to attack Su Chan saying that Su Chan should give up the USB. However, Su Chan quickly used his wings to evade the attack as he tried to escape the encampment which made him to realize what the target is all about. As he flew away, he saw the B antenna student who helped him earlier about the information on class enrollment, who called out to him to hide in the cave he was. Su Chan dashed into the cave to catch his breath, while his pursuers sped away. 
unaware that he was in the cave. He then turned to thank the student who had saved him. But the student had already stung Su Chan with poison because he was a honeybee hybrid, immobilizing Su Chan, who was in disbelief because he had never imagined that the honeybee student would lure him in order to get the USB as well. However, the honeybee student took the USB from Su Chan telling him that he should not be disappointed because all students are competitors, and calling Su Chan a fool for thinking he could receive assistance from a fellow competitor. He went on to say that Su Chan must have realized that the goal of the enrollment process was to have the students fight it out until only the strongest remained. The honeybee student then told Su Chan that he would use the USB very well, that Su Chan should try harder next year, and that no one like Su Chan will ever be top student to which he flew away with his wings. However, Su Chan couldn't give up because he realized that if the USB was stolen by the Honey Bee student, he couldn't become the top student, he then removed the bee sting, thinking that if he couldn't recover the USB, he couldn't get the Cinderella, which meant that he couldn't return to a regular human. He then charged at the Honey Bee student, but Su Chan couldn't reach him because the student was however. Su Chan couldn't give up, believing that he had to catch the student at that moment. Su Chan's eyes began to glow green, he realized he could clearly see the student's movements, which is what made the dragonfly known as the king of hunting, with a 95% success rate, due to its eyes, which are shaped like a beehive, as its eyes are made of thousands of lenses, which enable it to see any small movement within 360 degrees. This eye trait activated in Su Chan as he had the thought of wanting to catch for the first time, to which he had identified as a prey. The honeybee student was taken aback when he realized Su Chan had activated the dragonfly's thousand eyes not long after. Su Chan caught up with him and punched his chin. He Jin was seen in the smart lecture room after successfully completing her enrollment process, thinking how much longer until the enrollment is over. When the boy who was seen fighting with the scorpion lady asked He Jin about Su Chan if he would be fine, as there were a lot of students gunning for Professor Ma's class and that if Su Chan does not enroll in time, he would be automatically placed on a leave of absence, which made He Jin recall. Back in the woods, Su Chan was seen punching the student in the chin, causing the student to drop the USB as he was blown away. Su Chan immediately flew towards the falling USB, which was taken by another student, who was laughing as she sped away, saying that she thanked Su Chan for the gift and that she would put it to good use. Su Chan was shocked when he saw that another student had taken his USB, thinking that he had to catch the student. It was then he realized that the Honey Bee student was still falling off, which could result in his death given the height. He then looked back at his USB which had been taken away, thinking that it wasn't his fault if the Honey Bee student died because it was he who hit him first. However, Su Chan was unable to leave for his USB, prompting him to save the Honey Bee student whose head was about to hit the ground because he was still a human. He then dropped the student off on a tree branch before leaving, thinking that he had messed up because he couldn't see the student who had taken his USB. He then thought that he had to get another USB, but at that moment, Su Chan fell weakly to the ground as his body was affected by the poison, thinking that he was reduced to such a pitiful state because of the class enrollment before falling unconscious. Su Chan awoke when he heard someone yell at him, to whom he recognized as the white-haired middleman he met earlier, who is Professor Jai. He then asked Professor Jai, who was seen eating some chips, about how long he had been unconscious, to which Professor Jai replied that the class enrollment is over and he should get going which shocked Su Chan. Then Professor Jai continued that. There are still five minutes left but there shouldn't be any USB left to take as most students would have finished their class enrollment process, and that Su Chan should aim for the following year. But there's no guarantee that Cinderella will survive until then. When Su Chan heard this, he stood up and protested that he had been attacked beforehand, which resulted to his USB stolen, and that he had also fainted due to poison, to which he asked Professor Jai if all of those things are not considered cheating. To which he looked back at Su Chan as he berated Su Chan that he thought Su Chan had messed up his head. To which he asked Su Chan if he wanted to request a special exception to redo the enrollment, which made Su Chan dumbfounded. Professor Jai then continued that in that school, the most important thing is to be strong, and the professors have been monitoring the students so that they can stop any life-threatening acts, since jungle juice turned humans into weapons, causing them to have poison horns, claw.ws, and other dangerous things. It's only natural for them to ask the students to fight for everything, and that if Su Chan wants a peaceful life, he should go to the Nest Civilian Protection Facility and live as a human bug for the rest of his life. Professor Jai then scrounged up the chip's paper wrap and threw it at Su Chan, telling him to toss the trash on his way out and not to forget about the trash sorting project he had left. Su Chan was seen holding up the trash, thinking that it was all over for him because he couldn't even complete the class enrollment. He then brushed away the thoughts, as he yelled out called himself a trash, which prompted him to recall Professor Jai's words about sorting out the trash, which made him check out the scrounged up paper bag thinking that there is nothing to sort about it, only to find a red USB in it. He remembered, 
Professor Jai saying that the time left for the class enrollment to end was five minutes. Professor Ma called out to Professor Jai who was passing by in the woods, which surprised Professor Jai. Professor Ma then asked Professor Jai why he gave Su Chen the USB, to which Professor Jai replied that he wanted Su Chen to be on his side so that he could beat on him. Su Chen was seen flying at a high speed in order to make it to the lecture room on time, but he felt that if he had to close his eyes to prevent dust and air, he might fail the landing. He then remembered that he had a glasses which he brought out and used which made to increase the speed. Four students were seen not far from the school as they were lying in wait for students who were rushing back so that they could steal the USB in order to enroll themselves. Not long after, they spotted Su Chan flying over, prompting them to remain in attack position, only to see Su Chan sped through them. When they saw this, they immediately pursued Su Chan, intending to steal the USB in the classroom, but were stopped. He Jin, Cho Hai Sum, and Chun Du Hua, the duo who fought each other earlier in the school. He Jin then asked the student if they had forgotten that fighting in the building is forbidden. She then remembered when she finished her enrollment process, to which she received a text message from Professor Jai that she should Su Chan, which made her wonder what Su Chan did to get Professor Jai's attention. Su Chan was seen as he flew into the lecture room, as he rushed to the laptop and inserted the USB to which he quickly completed the enrollment process. He was relieved as he saw that the class enrollment was completed successfully in time. He was still content with the result, thinking that if he worked harder than everyone else, he could still aim for the top student to which the laptop showed a notification that prompted him to check. Su Chan was surprised to see that he had an orientation right away, so he went to the department classroom, wondering if there was anything else he needed to do. Su Chan was seen being dragged away by the guards, who informed him that the building is a restricted area into which only students and faculty of the nest are permitted to enter. He explained that he is a student, to which they responded that he needed to show them his student ID before he could be allowed to enter. At that moment, He Jin came over and handed him his student ID explaining that his student ID had just been issued, to which the guards allowed him to enter. As Su Chan and He Jin approached the lecture hall, Su Chan asked He Jin if she was also taking Professor Jai's course, to which she replied that the course is more her style and tried to console Su Chan not to think too much about it since he couldn't get into Professor Ma's class, implying that being valedictorian would be much more difficult, to which Su Chan replied that he hasn't given up yet as he flicked his student ID as proof prompting He Jin to say that he can be a persistent guy. Not long after, they arrived at the lecture room, where every girl in the class turned their attention to him upon entering. They asked him if he was the dragonfly guy in the theater incident, which stunned him as he wondered if the people in Nest had already seen everything. At that moment, Hai Sung banged his fist on the table as he berated Su Chan for opening his wings in public and that because of his act. They worked very hard for a month to try and change the public perception and that they couldn't take him out of there because they were busy stopping the authorities from taking him. That both He Jin and him worked very hard to erase all evidence, which made Su Chan realize what had really happened, to which he had previously thought that it was getting buried faster than he thought it would. He Jin smacked a book on Hai Sung's head, asking him to stop, and then told Su Chan not to worry about him because everyone knew he was trying to save the girl, to which the girls smiled, and that if she had been in the same situation, she would have made the same choice, and that Su Chan should be proud of what he did. Hearing this made Su Chan have a good impression of He Jin because she had gone through a lot of trouble for him and could still encourage him. He Jin then told Su Chan that she had to head out as she had to run some errands to which she left immediately. A male student was seen seated in the last row as he smiled. Hai Sung was seen as he complained that He Jin was taken Su Sai Chan simply because he was a transfer student. Every girl booed Hai Sung for being jealous. The male student appeared at Hai Sung's side as he grabbed Hai Sung's head and brutally slammed him on the table which shocked everyone in the class. He then stretched his body saying that he wanted everyone to show up before he talked but he couldn't wait any longer. That he have a favor to ask them which is to let him become the valedictorian. At that moment his friends walked into the lecture room with bats, and that he really wanted Cinderella, to which he wanted the students to hand over their student IDs for the semester that he would be the only one to come to class, to which the male student and his friends were seen as they collected the student IDs from the terrified students. But Su Chan couldn't give in to such an act as he confronted the male student as he flew at him with his fist, which made the student realize that Su Chan is a flyer. He then told Su Chan for being generous to come at him like a baseball, to which he dodged Su Chan as a bat came behind him smashed at Su Chan's head which made to fall unconscious. Su Chan winced in pain as he rose from his bed, wondering where he was, to which He Jin replied that he was the nest nurse's office and that when she returned she found Su Chan and Hai Sung bleeding and unconscious, prompting her to bring them to the nurse's office, where Su Chan realized that they had taken his student ID, to which He Jin told him not to worry because he could just get it reissued which made Su Chan be relieved thinking that those guys are stupid as he could easily reissued it just like what He Jin said. 
Heejin then informed him that she helped them to get the class student IDs reissued. She then said she'd be back soon and that he should rest, to which he thanked her, thinking that Heejin was nice and calm, that she was very considerate of others, which he attributed to being the department representative, which reminded him of how Mai he usually took care of others as well. Hai Sung then called out to Su Chan, who was startled. Hai Sung then asked about what happened in the lecture room earlier, to which Su Chan then explained to him which made Hai Sung to be enraged when he heard that their student IDs were taken. However, Su Chan calmed him down that He Jin would help them to reissue it. When Hai Sung heard this statement, he called Su Chan an idiot for believing what He Jin said. He then informed Su Chan that what the male student meant was that he would be able to keep his competition in check. He then asked Su Chan if he thought it would be possible to reissue the student ID in a day, which made Su Chan realize that what He Jin meant earlier was to go and get student IDs back from the student who took them. He Jin was seen with the male student and his companions who bullied the students into collecting the student IDs near a lake as He Jin asked him if he would return the student IDs if she asked nicely about it, to which the male student laughed and said that He Jin should have known that it could never work that way. He wondered that he only needed to bring He Jin, who is the top of the class for the first semester, over by using the student IDs as an excuse. At that moment, one of the student tried to sneak upon He Jin who immediately reacted as she smashed the student's head into the ground. Others were enraged as they charged at her with their bats, to which He Jin leapt up. But the male student was enraged that his companions were stupid because they couldn't even realize they couldn't fight He Jin on land. So he called out to He Jin that he will drop the student IDs into the water as he gestured as if he would drop it into the lake. Seeing this, He Jin dashed towards him in an attempt to grab the student IDs, to which the male student laughed, as he had lured He Jin to his turf, which is water, as he was a giant water bug, which is the strongest predator among the waterborne insects. As he smacked He Jin into the lake with a splash, to which He Jin couldn't move around just like when she was on the land. He then aimed his pincers at He Jin, saying that with her out of the way then being the valedictorian would be easy for him, who grabbed at the pincers. He then strangled He Jin into the water restraining her from getting out, to which He Jin struggled to free herself. His companions then asked him to take more of his time and make it more painful for He Jin as he was still sore from her punches. The male student then replied that maybe he should play with He Jin since he would eventually kill her. At that moment, something flew past on the water as it slammed the male student giving He Jin to catch her breath as she was under the lake for a while. However, the other students were perplexed as to what had just occurred. He Jin then looked over to see Su Chan, who was seen punching the male student. When the male student saw this, he clenched his fist and said that he was impressed that Su Chan wasn't affected by the bat's earlier hit. He then tried to punch Su Jaw, Chan's which Su Chan evaded due to his compound eye which enabled him to see the movement of the male student thinking that he can match the male student. At that moment, He Jin yelled at Su Chan to move away immediately. It was then Su Chan realized that he was about to be pierced behind by male students' pincers to which he narrowly dodged and moved to a higher altitude, to which he, Jin then informed him that the male student is different from the rest as the location is not good either that the bug inside the male student is an aquatic insect that inhabits the water and that it's over as soon as the male student get in drag him into the water, that they have to get out of the water immediately. The male student then brought out the student IDs, saying that if they left, he would drop the student IDs, to which Su Chan replied that not only did the male student have manpower, but he also had the advantage in location as well. He Jin then asked Su Chan to leave, saying that there is no need for him to fight, that their target is her, that if they get what they want, they might just return the student IDs, and that it was her problem from the start to which Su Chan replied that he won't leave as He Jin told him before that he won't be alone, which is what she just said as he didn't come alone. At that moment, Hai Sung appeared behind the other students, attacking them with his strong legs that had thorns, which was a grasshopper trait, saying that he had come to take his student ID, which stunned the male student as he realized that Hai Sung had recovered which he planned to take care of after he dealt with He Jin. At that moment, Su Chan charged at him in an attempt to catch the student IDs unaware, to which the male student dodged as he replied that he had already knew that Su Chan would try such a thing, and that Su Chan made a mistake of coming to his range as he swiped his pincers at Su Chan who dodged it easily, which made the male student wonder what kind of bug Su Chan is who can fly efficiently. At that moment, Su Chan rushed at the male student leading the male student to believe that Su Chan was attempting to steal the student IDs. But Su Chan used his momentum when he used the dragonfly speed to maximize the effects of the punch, resulting in nose blood. However, Su Chan realized that the blow had only half of its effect, 
to which the male student grabbed his nose as he asked Hee Jin to let them settle the conflict in words. At that moment, one of the male students appeared at Hee Jin's behind as he tried to hold Hee Jin in order to allow the male student to attack Hee Jin who jabbed at the guy behind her. At that point, the male student had already reached Hee Jin in an attempt to punch him but was stopped by Su Chan who held the pincers which prevented the male student from doing anything to Hee Jin. He then dragged him out of the water saying that the male student was now out of his turf as he flung him away, who heavily got smashed on the floor as he retrieved the student IDs saying that no matter how much the guy wanted the Cinderella as his method was bad and that if the male student eventually became a human. He Jin then realized that they had successfully recovered back the student IDs. However, by the time they got to back to the lecture room the orientation was already over. They did, however, return the student IDs to their classmates. But they decided to keep it a secret that it was them who returned it to them. To which He Jin insisted that she wanted to keep it a secret because everything that had happened was because of her. Which made her plead with them so hard for them to refuse. Su Chan was seen in a new room unpacking his belongings. As his old house is quite far from the school and since he had decided to enroll. Then student housing was not a bad idea for him. However, he wondered how he became roommate with Hai Sung who wrapped his arms around Su Chan saying that Su Chan acted cool earlier. Hai Sung then asked Su Chan if he drank as well, to which Su Chan replied that he drank as much as everyone else. At that moment, Ki Jin came in with Du Hua who carried beer in. Ki Jin then apologized for coming over without asking since they were planning a start of term party that day and Hai Sung and Su Chan both were roommates which made it a whole lot easier. She then asked Su Chan to drink. Somewhere in the woods, the student bully was seen kneeling in fear and apologizing for not being able to kill the professor's disciple, to which a woman was seen sitting on a tree branch as she told the student bully that because he had failed his mission, he would be eliminated, to which the student bully was mortified and quickly said that if he was given another chance, he would make sure to kill Hee Jin and have the Cinderella, to which the woman with a bug head replied that she does not need the Cinderella, as she jumped down killing the student bully in cold blood, saying that despite his great strength, he wasn't able to beat some newbies which was quite embarrassing. She then lifted the bug head like helmet saying that the leader will be pleased, as they have found what they were looking for. The next day, Su Chan and others were seen in the bug benefit department lecture room, to which Su Chan was nervous as to what would be taught about the day's major subject, which is the practical bug fighting arts, to which He Jin, who sat beside him, asked him to calm down as it was the first lecture, to which they were informed that they will just do a basic test which implied that there shouldn't be anything difficult and that she will help him out since Professor Jai then instructed everyone to follow his instructions and complete a simple test, and that the results of the test would be reflected in their grades. He then brought out a chainsaw, telling the students to take notes because they might die, which freaked Su Chan out. At the training grounds, outside of Nest, the bug benefit department first year students were seen running for their lives as Professor Jai chased them around with the chainsaw. Su Chan, He Jin, and Hai Sung were also seen running which made Su Chan wonder why Professor Jai was chasing them and trying to kill them, to which Hai Sung replied that he is the professor in charge of their major, which stunned Su Chan when he heard that, to which He Jin expressed further that their major is practical and sectine martial arts, which is focused on learning how to fight using an insect's abilities, and that their main job is to fight people like the mantis, which Su Chan met before. Professor Jai then told them that he had explained it the other day at the orientation, which they were not present for, that insect abilities are like weapons and that there are those who abuse the abilities for criminal purposes, to which Su Chan and others must learn how to fight because Nest must find and protect all those who become insect hybrids, to which he turned to Su Chan and said that he had told him before that only the strongest will survive, and that if Su Chan wants to earn the Cinderella, he should pick up the pace, and the first test is tag which everyone should avoid him using their insect abilities. That if he caught them, they would fail without exception because they would have no chance of becoming valedictorian, which stunned Su Chan. After this, Professor Jai began the test by starting the chainsaw, which he swerved around, and Su Chan could only barely dodge the chainsaw while wondering if the whole process made sense to him, as why do they have to run when Professor Jai said that they have to learn how to fight, as he thought back to when he met the mantis to which the only thing he did was to run. At that moment, Hai Sung was seen as he barely dodged the chainsaw onslaught, as he wondered how the professor could be that fast. Professor, Jai then charged at Hai Sung with the chainsaw. At that moment, Su Chan grabbed Hai Sung as they barely escaped the tag. Seeing this, Professor Jai realized that Su Chan used the dragonfly's thousand eyes, which enabled Su Chan to see the movement of the chainsaw. Professor Jai then taunted Su Chan for being comfortable using the dragonfly abilities despite his claims that he wanted to get rid of his wings, which seemed like Su Chan had become a real dragonfly. When Su Chan heard this statement, 
He thought back to when Kim Mai he called him a monster which made him to be distracted as he was lost in thoughts. Seeing this, Professor Jai made use of the opportunity to charge at Su Chan. He Jin rescued him by telling him to jolt out of his thoughts and that if he got caught, he would fail, prompting Su Chan to express his gratitude. He Jin then signaled at Hai Sung prompting Hai Sung to skid through under the chainsaw as he created a smokescreen at Professor Jai to gain enough time for them to flee, which indeed stalled Professor Jai. As they fled from him, the bug-headed woman was seen at the nest underground confinement zone as she walked over a dead guard towards where the mantis was locked up. She then asked the mantis how the nest could do that to him, which made the mantis wonder where she came from. She then brought out the bully's student ID and placed it on the lock which was rejected, saying that she would have loved to open the lock for him but the student ID could not bypass the security lock there, which is why she had the honeybee student bring over the professor ID, who came over saying that he was able to steal it while the professor was in the middle of giving a lecture, and he then gave it to the bug-headed woman, to which the bug-headed woman hugged the honeybee student saying that she wondered why such a smart student like him was put on academic leave. However the honeybee student then regained his sanity as he wondered why he stole something from the professor's office, and that how did he got there, to which the bug-headed woman then told him not to worry about small things like that, as she unlocked the prison where the mantis was locked in, to which the mantis came out as he bit off the cuffs on his hands. He then looked at the honeybee student as he was salivating saying that he smelled something delicious. Seeing this, the bug-headed woman then tossed the honeybee student at the mantis saying that her leader was indeed right about the mantis who think like an insect and that she has a little present for him to which the mantis devoured the terrified student. Su Chan was seen panting and trying to catch his breath, saying that it had been an hour already, and that he couldn't believe he had spent half of the class running and hiding, wondering what kind of class that was. Hai Sung then informed them that it appears the other students were caught while they were running away, which made Su Chan realize that all the students who were caught would fail, to which He Jin then said that Professor Jai doesn't go back on his words, which made Su Chan to think that he had been having a bad feeling about it from the start as Professor Jai was being way too tough for the first day. Su Chan then squatted down, sighed, and said that this made him wish he was in Professor Ma's class even more, to which He Jin consoled him to hang in there as there is only one more hour until the class is over. Hai Sung then hushed them to be quiet as he whispered that Professor Jai is around, which prompted them to look where Hai Sung pointed he heard something from. At that moment, two girls were seen as they were trying to escape, to which one of them tripped and sprained her ankle, who is known as Hyona. At that moment, Professor Jai came over with his chainsaw, which the other girl explained to him that Hyona had sprained her ankle, but Professor Jai told them to run. That a sprained ankle or even a lost foot is not an excuse in real life situations as they would die if they couldn't run. He then raised his chainsaw at them saying that they will die if they don't escape immediately. At that moment, Su Chan charged out of his hiding as he stopped the chainsaw with his hand and yelled at Professor Jai that he was going too far, that it was only the first day, which is too much for them to handle. Professor Jai then replied that if it had been a real fight, the girls would have been dead by now and asked Su Chan if he could say the same thing to the mantis he met before. He then continued that if Su Chan could manage to land even one hit on him before the end of the class, he would retract his words about failing everyone. Otherwise, Su Chan, He Jin, and Hai Sung would be expelled. The mantis and bug-headed woman were seen outside the nest at the time, but the mantis was sniffing around the woods. So the bug-headed woman asked the mantis what he was doing because her leader was waiting for them. The mantis drooled as he replied that he smelled something delicious nearby, and that the smell is familiar, leading him to believe that Su Chan the dragonfly was nearby. Su Chan flew back, thinking that if he landed one hit on Professor Jai, everyone would pass the test and if he didn't, he would be expelled. He concluded that it would be easy for him as all he had to do was land a hit on him. He then charged at the professor with his fist, who moved to the side as he dodged it, saying that it seemed Su Chan had never used his fists before because his movements are so dull and slow that he couldn't even hit a fly. Su Chan then charged at him again to which Professor Jai dodged taunting Su Chan that if Su Chan want to dance with him considering how he move around, and that with the rate Su Chan was attacking, that Su Chan would run out of time and get expelled. He Jin and Hai Sung were wondering if Su Chan would be able to hit him considering the way Professor Jai was not letting up at all, to which He Jin said that Su Chan might have a chance, to which Su Chan's eyes glowed which made Professor Jai realize that Su Chan is using his compound eyes which was a result of Su Chan being subconsciously recognized his target as prey. Not long after, Su Chan grabbed Professor Jai's shirt thinking that he had caught the professor as he raised his punch. However, Professor Jai turned around and smacked Su Chan to the ground using his weight. Professor Jai then asked Su Chan if he thought the prey would allow itself to be eaten without any retaliation, which made Su Chan realize he couldn't compete. Professor Jai was asked if he was using any kind of insect power, to which Professor Jai replied that while he is an insect hybrid like him, there are side effects to using his power as he was rather old, 
in which his body could not handle the side effects, which is why he always kept the chainsaw with him as a form of protection. Professor Jai then said that since Su Chan is still young without anything to hold him back, which meant that Su Chan should be able to defeat him easily. He then asked Su Chan why he couldn't beat him as he dropped an insect on Su Chan, who immediately jumped out of fear, to which Professor Jai told him that it was only a model, and that Su Chan's disgust of insects limits how much of his power he can use, and that if Su Chan wants to know how to use his powers properly, he should accept that he is now part insect. When Su Chan heard this, he remembered how he had always hated insects, which eventually led to him becoming a part insect, and how the fact that he wanted to hide the fact that he had become a part insect made him hate insects even more. At that moment, the bug-headed woman was seen clapping as she approached Professor Jai and Su Chan, praising Professor Jai for scaring Su Chan with expulsion in one hit, and that giving lessons to his students at every opportunity demonstrated what a true educator he is. She then used her fang to slash Yona, saying that Professor Jai could be disgusting at times, which stunned Su Chan because of how fast the attack was. When Hai Sung saw this, he charged at her, and she stabbed him with her fang. Hai Sung felt his mind blurry and wondered if it was a poison sting to which the bug-headed woman hugged him and said that he wouldn't feel any pain due to the paralysis, as Hai Sung fell unconscious, to which the woman said that Hai Sung would make a good snack and she had already fed the mantis one student on the way, and that the mantis kept saying more, which made Su Chan to realize that it was similar to the feeder incident. At that moment, Professor Jai got pierced from behind by the mantis's piercer. Seeing this, He Jin called out to the professor. However, Su Chan discovered that he was experiencing the same feelings of weakness and fear that he had previously experienced, to which He Jin was surprised by the appearance of the mantis who was supposed to be in the underground facility, and more importantly, felt that the mantis is different from when she took him down, as he seemed like a predator who had recovered his energy after eating something. However, the bug-headed woman then informed Mantis that they had stayed long enough and that Hai Sung should be enough of a snack for him, to which he grumbled that it's been a while he had regained his normal strength, to which he left with her and carried Hai Sung along. He Jin wanted to stop them but was stopped by Professor Jai, who told her that the bug-headed woman and the Mantis were dangerous and that He Jin knew she couldn't fight outsiders without authorization from the academy and that he had contacted the academy that He Jin should leave the rest to the academy while she and others got to safety, to which He Jin yelled that there's no time for formalities as Hai Sung was being taken away, to which Professor Jai bluntly replied that as long as she is still a student of Nest, then there is nothing she can do about it. However, Su Chan unfurled his wings as he flew into the sky in pursuit of the bug-headed woman and the mantis, saying that since Professor Jai said that if he lost the bet, he would be expelled. He doesn't have to follow the rules anymore. And then he left, knowing that he froze because he was afraid of the mantis because he couldn't do anything when Hai Sung was taken away. Professor Jai, on the other hand, called Su Chan a fool for going after his nemesis, despite the fact that this was one of the reasons he taught his students how to flee. Soon after, Su Chan caught up with the mantis as he charged at him with his punch, which the mantis noticed and said he could smell his scent, causing Su Chan's sneak attack to fail. As Su Chan evaded the mantis's attack, he calmed himself because he knew it would be the end of him if he was hit with the pincers, so he kept his distance in air and then saw an opportunity, which he took and dived as he smashed a punch at the mantis's lower jaw, to which the mantis laughed as he asked Su Chan if that was all he had. Su Chan felt terrible pain from his knuckles as he realized that his hand was bruised which was a result of the hard skin the mantis possess, which is known as exoskeleton, which the mantis had due consuming some insect hybrids. He then said that he was going to leave before but since Su Chan came on his own, that implied that Su Chan want to be eaten by him. When Su Chan saw how the mantis was, he realized he couldn't defeat it, and he thought he was going to die. So the mantis charged at Su Chan, who tried his best to dodge and block the attacks. But the bug-headed woman who was by the side with the unconscious Hai Sung urged the mantis to kill Su Chan quickly so that they could be on their way, as she couldn't control the mantis since he had consumed before. At that moment, Hai Sung regained his consciousness, which was due to Su Chan's yells. Hai Sung's body trembled as he couldn't move. However, the bug-headed woman saw this, and tried to kill Hai Sung who was still struggling to get up. But Su Chan flew with Hai Sung. Su Chan then asked Hai Sung to try and escape while stalling the mantis and the bug-headed woman who both attacked Su Chan at the same time. Hai Sung was shocked as to how Su Chan could risk his life to save someone else without hesitation. However, Su Chan didn't regret doing. At that moment, Hai Sung grabbed Su Collar Chan's as he dashed away, which stunned the bug-headed woman as how Hai Sung was able to get away so far quickly. Hai Sung then leaped into the sky with Su Chan as they escaped away. However the bug-headed woman asked Mantis to give up and be on their way, to which the Mantis refused saying that he won't give up as he realized that their scent had stopped somewhere not too far away, 
which meant that Su Chan and Hai Sung had not run away. Hai Sung was seen as he was shocked when Su Chan told him that he wanted to defeat the Mantis, which made Hai Sung think that Su Chan may have messed up his head, as he reminded Su Chan that they had to run away if they couldn't beat the Mantis and that he should look at his body, which is a mess, and that the Mantis was not like the bullies they fought with earlier and that if they made a mistake, they could die. But Su Chan replied that it was the main reason why they should take the Mantis down so that someone else like him wouldn't fall prey to the Mantis' hands. And he then informed Hai Sung that the professor had already contacted the academy for reinforcement as they only needed to hold him down until the reinforcement arrives. Su Chan then told Hai Sung that he had an idea. He Jin was seen as she was applying pressure on Professor Jai's wound as she was confused on what to do next, since she couldn't leave the professor the way he was. But she heard a rustle in the nearby bush, as she felt that there was someone nearby. The bug-headed woman tried to console the Mantis because they couldn't find Su Chan and Hai Sung, saying she would find more prey for the Mantis. At that moment, the Mantis turned his head as he discovered a scent all over the place, to which Su Chan barged in, catching the bug-headed woman off guard with the leaf twigs that he used to tie her to a tree with an insane speed, to which the Mantis took to because of the, the glasses Su Chan used. After he tied up the bug-headed woman, he then charged at the Mantis as kicked him at the jaw who replied that it doesn't hurt him at all to which Su Chan already knew. The Mantis then charged at Su Chan with his pincers saying that he is the apex predator as there is nothing Su Chan could do about it, to which Su Chan dodged his attacks, as he tried to stall the Mantis for Hai Sung to bring over Professor Jai's weapon, which is the chainsaw. At the time, He Jin told Professor Jai that his weapon was taken by Hai Sung to which Professor Jai replied that he would concede to them, as he could not even protect his weapon. Hai Sung then called out to Su Chan as he threw the chainsaw at him, to which Su Chan took to the air as he dived at the Mantis, switching on the chainsaw to cut the Mantis down. The Mantis then stretched his mouth to devour Su Chan, who had lost all hope as he was about to be devoured by the Mantis. At that moment, an explosion occurred at the location, as Professor Jai arrived with an overwhelming aura, which shocked Su Chan as to how the professor was able to recover, to which Professor Jai then replied him that he was treated by the nest reinforcements as they have someone who can easily fix serious wounds like his and he was able to find him with Hai Sung's footprints. Professor Jai wondered that Su Chan and Hai Sung would have been dead by the time he gets there but discovered that they were able to give the Mantis quite a fight. He realized that Su Chan was able to defend himself well against his natural predators when he was a fresh transfer student, which earned Su Chan a demonstration from Professor Jai. He then confronted the Mantis, saying that even though the Mantis got away with his surprise attack, it wouldn't work twice. The Mantis then charged at Professor Jai with the intention of devouring him, who then said that he would make sure to pay the Mantis back for ruining his first lecture and punching a hole in him. As his arm started to smoke which was a result of trait of the bombardier beetle which is able to mix chemicals within its body to create heat, and when fighting the predators, the mix of heated chemicals can be ejected which would result in explosion. Professor Jai then activated his dynamite stance, causing an explosion that shocked Su Chan and Hai Sung as the explosion ripped through the surrounding trees, scorching the earth, to which Professor Jai explained that this is what happened to those who use jungle juice, which is known as insecta complex, which is known as the complex's true potential. Seeing this, Su Chan wondered if the complex is also the insect powers. He then saw Professor Jai's hand trembled which made him to remember what Professor Jai said about his side effects when he used his powers to which Professor Jai explained that it was the price he paid when he wielded his complex rashly a long time ago. He then warned Su Chan not to end up in the same situation like him that he should try and make his power fully his as soon as possible. The incident then came to an end, as Su Chan and Hai Sung were both heavily bandaged, due to their injuries, to which they were both relieved that Professor Jai took back everyone as they thought that they were going to be expelled before. Hai Sung then said that the Mantis had been locked up again and the authorities were going to reinforce the security so that such a thing do not happen again. However, Su Chan wondered how the bug-headed woman escaped without any of them knowing about it. He then thought that he should try make the complex his. Later that night, Hai Sung arose from his bed and made his way into the forest where he met the bug-headed woman, who held his face as she said that it appears that the nest were not expecting her to control Hai Sung in another way. She then strangled Hai Sung, saying that the nest cannot protect anyone, and at that moment, Professor Jai appeared as he smashed his fist to the ground, causing an explosion, saying that he knew she would appear again and that she would try to destroy something he is trying to protect which was why even though he saw the stinger, he left it in, and that regardless of what she is planning, he was confident that he would be able to protect it, referring to her as Shin Gaeon who eventually revealed her face. Professor Jai asked Shin Gaeon how she was doing since it had been five years since she left Nest, to which Shin Gaeon replied that they both know that they were not there to discuss, to which Professor Jai then said that it was his way of showing at least the minimal respect to a pupil he hadn't seen in a while, 
and that if she insists, he would beat her down and take her back to the nest. To which Shin Gei and dodged as she jumped back saying that Professor Jai was quick to reveal his true feelings. To which Professor Jai angrily replied that she does not have the right to say as she killed two students and eight employees. Professor Jai then directed the explosion at Shin Gei who dodged and attacked the professor with her stinger, to which Professor Jai changed his route of attack to her, who then jumped away. At that moment, Professor Ma arrived and asked Shin Gaiyan to stop and leave before the nest security arrived, to which Professor Jai vehemently protested that there was someone backing, to which Professor Ma replied that they should let her go and track her later, as her ability could cause more casualties the longer she stays. At that time, some voices were heard as they were the nest security which prompted Shin Gaiyan to leave saying that the next time she comes, she would kill every single one. Not long after, the nest security guards came running as they tried to quench the fire Professor Jai made. Professor Ma then said that he understood that Professor Jai wanted to settle it personally as Shin Gaiyan was his student, but it's dangerous if he faced her alone as he was heavily injured and that Shin Gaiyan was traced by their nest security guards, so they should leave the rest to the guards. He then noticed Su Chan who helped Hai Sung up and asked Professor Jai to have a talk with him. Su Chan and Professor Jai were later seen walking as they brought Hai Sung along. Su Chan then asked Professor Jai if Hai Sung will be alright to which Professor Jai replied that if he removed the stinger Hai Sung would be fine as he would wake up the next day without remembering anything that happened. After a while of silence, Professor Jai asked Su Chan not to tell anyone about what happened earlier that Shin Gaiyan was his student who left five years ago after a certain incident and that they haven't heard news of her since then, though it seemed that she wanted to attack Nest and its students with malice, whose existence will scare the students so they should talk about it when it's time. Su Chan then asked for something in return for keeping the secret, that he would keep the secret if Professor Jai teach him the techniques he used to when he fought with the Mantis and he had been thinking about what Professor Jai said earlier about the fact he had to accept as a part insect, and that he felt weak and unable to do anything to which he had to sit and watch Hai Sung to be kidnapped, and that if it wasn't for Professor Jai, he would have been killed by the Mantis. Su Chan declared that he wants to be stronger, which was why he needed Professor Jai's help, to which Professor Jai replied that Su Chan should be ready then. Few days later, in the Nest student cafeteria, He Jin and Su Chan were seen as they listened to what Hai Sung said while they were eating, who claimed that when he woke up few days ago at the infirmary he discovered that he had leaves all over his clothes, to which Su Chan only urged him to eat. However, He Jin was suspicious about Su Chan's reply. Not long after, their attention was directed to Cha Du Hua who was seen on the queue to have her food, to which Su Chan asked He Jin about her not being in their class, to which He Jin replied that Du Hua is a kind of special case, to which she explained further that there are cases where a few people got non-arthropod DNA instead to which they were being researched to see exactly what degree of organisms it can affect to which Du Hu was among the students who got excused from class to get some lab tests done in order to help the research, and that Du Hu would join them in class that day. Su Chan then asked He Jin about the kind of insect she is, who replied that it is an insect related to mantises, which made Su Chan to sweat profusely as he thought about the mantis, which made him to realize that was the reason why He Jin was so strong. At that moment, Du Hua kicked Hai Sung away, as she declared that she had arrived which startled both Su Chan and He Jin to which she then sat down and informed them that they have a group project in class that day, which Su Chan didn't know what it was all about. He then asked He Jin who told him that all the group projects for practical and sectin martial arts have different topics each time, which are usually not hard, although there are some time when they would encounter some problem jungle juice users like the Mantis. Su Chan then wondered if that would be the chance for him to test what he had been practicing, to which He Jin then further explained that the group projects teams would be assigned by the professor, and that their team comprised of her, Hai Sung, Du Hua and Su Chan which are four in numbers. As Su Chan heard this, he was glad that he was in the same team as He Jin. Meanwhile Hai Sung and Du Hu were also good fighters, which he thought that he was lucky as he had aimed to be a valedictorian. Few days later, Professor Jai was seen exercising as his door was knocked, to which the person came in referring to himself as Ta Ju. He then informed Professor Jai that he had just received news about group project and that the four students had located the target while en route to a location, that one of the team members is dead, to which Professor Jai was shocked as the group project are Su Chan and others. At the department lecture hall, Professor Jai was seen as he gave instructions to the students about information where they had to go and get the jungle juice and bring it back, to which obtaining the jungle juice is the nest's biggest task and that it is also a lesson in intelligence operation and tenacity for persistently searching for something. 
He then gave the student a week to search everywhere in Gangwon province in order to find some jungle juice and that any team that find even one jungle juice will get an A+, plus for the entire team, to which everyone in the class started to discuss about how hard it is find a jungle juice, which Su Chan to wonder if finding the jungle juice was too hard considering the grade. Professor Jai then dispersed the class. Su Chan then asked Hee Jin if it would be fine for Du Hua and Hai Sung to be alone to which Hee Jin then replied that it would be more efficient for them to split up in two groups. Su Chan was happy that it would be easy for him to be a valedictorian. He then grabbed Hee Jin's hand saying that he knew where they could get the jungle juice, to which he led her to his house only to discover that his house had been ransacked. He then checked out his shelf to which he realized that the jungle juice was not there any longer, which stunned Su Chan and then he asked Hee Jin if they could check her home they should be able to see the jungle juice, to which Hee Jin replied that they do not need to check her house that they can just check the city, which made Su Chan to wonder if he had said anything wrong. They searched through the city stores to which they couldn't find any jungle juice. Su Chan even thought of fabricating it but was stopped by Hee Jin. However Su Chan was worried he won't be able to be the valedictorian. When He Jin saw this she asked Su Chan as to the reason why he wanted to get rid of his wings that badly and that if it was his girlfriend Mai He to which Su Chan wanted to deny but confirmed that Mai He was his girlfriend and that he wanted his normal college life and Mai He as well. And he didn't blame Mai He for being scared of him as the mantis almost killed her then. Su Chan then expressed his gratitude for helping him and then asked He Jin that being the top of the class meant that she badly wanted to go back to normal life and that he would try to beat her in order to get be valedictorian. To which Hee Jin replied that she does not want to go back to her normal life. Su Chan then received a call from Hai Sung who informed him that they have found an abandoned storage which the company who manufactured used before which was full of jungle juice. Which mean that they would be able to get an A plus easily and even make many Cinderella serums as well to which Su Chan was excited as heard this. To which Hee Jin realized that something was off but couldn't reach Hai Sung. She then urged Su Chan to let them hurry and go to the place in order to rescue Hai Sung and Du Hua. On getting to the storage location, they were ambushed by an insect hybrid which attacked them, and in the process of which Hee Jin was trying to save Su Chan got stabbed by the insect hybrid. And that's how the first part of this man wins. Well guys, if you like this video and you want a second part, comment below with the word part 2 also subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and like the video, but most important, leave a comment, until the next video.